Season 3 just dropped for Warzone and we got the full patch notes that we will break down to keep you in the know before you boot up next to jump into Rebirth Island. First off, we got the full playlist for the week, which is great that they kept it simple with all squad sizes on Rebirth Island for Resurgence. Break Resurgence will also kick off on Rebirth Island for trios only. And then on Earth's Extent, we got Battle Royale for all squad sizes with Plunder Quads also in the mix. A couple of switch ups on all maps and modes, Bystanders have been moved around to switch up the flow of the games. We also have a new mechanic of squad assemble where if you land close to your teammates, you will gain XP, cash, and an advanced supply UAV to help get to the looting and maybe find a rare chest or a loady chest if you are lucky. Now for Rebirth Island specifically, there are the biometric scanners that if you interact with one, you will get a key card that you can take to a buy station that can lead to ammo, cash, gear, kill streaks, and free items from the buy station and more. And if you got a teammate or teammates nearby when interacting, it ups the possibility for a better key card, so possibly better rewards. Rebirth will also be getting a modified champions quest or the new contract like on Urzik Stan and Vondel. Currently it says that once a certain number of consecutive wins or total number of wins are achieved, the ultimate contract mission will be confirmed. You will need 30 wins to get your shot at the champions quest on Rebirth Island. Last thing coming at launch is a new contract called Spy Drones that will have a bunch of drones spawn into an area for you and your team to take out. Enemies can easily third party and take out the drones and take the rewards, so check your six. Moving over to the weapon side, there are three new free weapons that can be acquired via the battle pass of the FJX Horus SMG that is ultra compact with the best in class CQC damage and mobility. If you like getting up close and personal, this will be the move for you. We also have the Moore's Sniper that is a single load railgun with insane velocity and penetration. Nice. And last, we got the Gladiator for all the melee weapon specialists out there. Now to the main part of this update, we got the weapon balancing to go through. Starting out with the ARs, the Ram 7 was nerfed as we expected with several damage and range decreases. The DG56 saw a slight nerf with Sprinter Fire increased, and then MW2 weapons got some buffs with the Lockman 556 seeing a damage and damage modifier increase, and then buffs to the M13C, the FR Advancer, and the Tempest Razorback. For battle rifles, the Bass B, the MTZ 762, and the SOA Subverter saw nerfs across the board, with the Sidewinder getting another buff to its sprint to fire and bullet velocity. Moving to SMGs, the Ram 9 and the AMR 9 saw some damage nerfs, but sprint to fire decreases, so we'll be snappier, but we'll need more shots to down. There was also a very common nerf that came to the rest of the SMGs for MW3, where they increased the sprint to fire speed, which I'm assuming is to bring them more in line with the MW2 ones, since they have less mobility overall. The Rival 9, the HRM 9, which should have definitely seen way more of a nerf than just this. The Striker, the WSP-9, and the WSP Swarm all saw a slight increase to the sprint to fire time that is less than 20 milliseconds, so basically negligible. The Striker 9 also saw that increase to the sprint to fire, but also got a max damage range increase. And then a few MW2 subs saw some damage and damage range buffs, those being the MX-9, the Lockman sub, and the Bass P. If only they would give the MX-9 a bigger mag, it could actually be something. For LMGs, the Bruin got a long range damage nerf with an ADS speed buff. The TAC Eradicator got a close range damage increase. And then the TAC Evolveer saw a couple of nerfs while the Rap H and the HCR-56 from MW2 saw some buffs. And then lastly, the RAL became even slower, so leave that off the roster. The Tempest Turret got a damage nerf. And then for Snipers, the XRK Stalker, the KV Inhibitor, and the SPX-80 saw nerfs to their ADS speeds. And to wrap this up, the Renetti and the WSP Akimbo got some buffs. We got a couple of attachment changes here, and the standout ones are that the VT Spirit Fire had a slight increase to his Sprint to Fire penalty, up to 5% from 2%. The DR6 Hand Stop decreases his ADS move and speed benefit, and then the Bruin Heavy Support Grip now helps less with horizontal recoil, so weapons will be less of a straight beam with this meta attachment. For Lethals, there were quite a bit of changes that you can read here. The standout updates are that Semtex will do more damage to a smaller radius, and EOD will keep you from going down if you get stuck by a Semtex. The Breacher Drone had its damage range range increase up to 10 meters, up from 3.5, but it will do less damage overall. Claymores can do up to 250 damage, so hopefully you are fully plated. Last change is that the armor box caught a nerf where it will only drop four plates per person versus six, so it won't even fully stock you anymore. So you're going to need to loot a bit more to keep plates inventory up. Now into the new mode coming with Rebirth Island, Ranked Resurgence. It'll play very similar to Ranked on Fortune's Keep last season, but with obvious changes with the new map. Full patch notes will be sliding through, but the highlights are player count is down to 45, so 15 total teams, and infill streaks that adjust certain POIs of Water Tower, Prison, and Lighthouse will be enabled when those roll out later in season to make each game possibly feel a little different when fighting and moving around in the center of the island. The rank reset if you played last season is that you will drop one whole division, so if you're in Diamond, you'll go down to Platinum, if you were in Gold, you'll go down to Silver, etc. Things to keep in mind when jumping in, 
we can always expect loadout to drop in circle two, fire sale in circle three, and restock in circle four. Bomb protection is reduced to 2.5 seconds, so you're going to need a drop soon or you're just going to be free SR for other teams. Oh, and one last thing, snipers cannot one-shot in ranked. That will be capped at 299 damage, so we'll leave someone truly one-shot, so be ready with that follow-up shot. Earning SR will change to accommodate the new map, so for kills, assists, or E limbs from your squad mates, here's the full breakdown. And then for final placement, you will get these SR rewards with 100 SR still awarded for winning the match. There are also seasonal SR challenges that you really don't have to try to compete. They are very simple as getting E limbs, assists, and placement for an easy 1000 SR to help climb quickly early in the season. Death fees also returned that are very similar to Fortune's Keep's last season, other than Crimson was bumped up to minus 7 SR, up from minus 6 I believe, as well as the deployment fees that were adjusted for Diamond and up, so going to be a little bit harder to stay in those top ranks. But yeah, that's about it for the Season 3 Warzone patch notes and this video. If you learned something new or you like my hoodie, let me know by hitting that like button. And if there's something that you like, dislike, or maybe something that I missed, let me know down in the comments section. I got you covered with news, updates, loadouts, and more for Call of Duty with Warzone and MW3. So be sure to subscribe to the channel to stay in the know for the next time you boot up. Appreciate you hanging with me, but above all, stay safe out there. And I'll catch you in the next one.